Come on, just keep worshiping the Lord. Mm. Jesus. Come on, somebody. Is there anybody grateful in the house this morning? Jesus. Is there anybody grateful online this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a wonderful God. Come on, put your hands together for our King. Hallelujah. Has he done anything for you? Come on, somebody. Has he done something for you? Put your hands together. Even if you're at home, put your hands together. Stand on your feet and give him some glory this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. We're not in no baseball game or a basketball game. We came to praise the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords, the one that woke us up this morning, hallelujah. The one that protected us all week long. That's who we come to serve this morning. That's who we come to lift up this morning. Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Woo. I'm excited. I got to slow down because, you know, I was telling my brother over there, Terry, and I, I want to thank all you guys for praying for Pastor. Um, I look way different than I look. Um, those that saw me when I was down, but, you know, I just told Terry, I said, you know, the enemy tried to, to he, he punched me. But, you know, when I was little, they had this little thing where uh, it was like this little plastic thing, and there was a lot of weight at the bottom. And so, you know, you thought you was a boxer. I thought it was Mike Tyson because Mike Tyson was back even big in the day. And you would punch the thing and you'd punch it and it would go down. And then it would boom, pop back up. Come on, I came to let the enemy know, hey, listen, you might have punched me, but I'm bouncing back up. Is there anybody else in the house? The enemy tried to punch you, but come on, tell them, look, I'm going to bounce back up. Come on, somebody, give God praise. Hallelujah. You got to come better than that, devil. Because I serve an awesome God, which I'm anchored in, huh? Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, you are so amazing. You are so wonderful. God, we thank you for being in this house this morning. Father, Holy Ghost, I pray that you would move like you'd never moved before. God, remove all distraction all negativity anything that's hindering us from receiving your word this morning father i pray that you would arrest our minds i pray that you would grab a hold of my tongue that you would speak manna from heaven this morning in the mighty name of jesus god have your way have your way have your way in jesus name somebody shout amen amen and amen hallelujah may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Well, Tab family, I, I, I came on real brief last week. Are you guys excited for our 21-day fast? We're seeking God. Amen. And let me, let me say this. Because sometimes when you talk about fasting and praying, people get nervous, you know, and because they can't eat. They're greedy. But listen, you know, listen, y'all know me. I love to eat. But you know what? I love to fast. And I love to pray. Yes. And so I believe, and we've been doing this for the last few years, that every year we start our year off with fasting and praying. And so I believe in God for something that's going to happen supernatural in your life. And you know what? It, it is good for us to just give our first month, give the first days of the new year to our awesome God. And so I want to just share just a few different fasts. I know I shared them last week. I just want to go over just in case anybody missed. But there's just not one way. I mean, we brought, we're bringing four different ways that you guys can partake in this. Um, but I pray that you do because um, I, I know it's, it's, it's going to just blow your mind. It's going to bless you and your family. And so the first one is a new one we threw on this year is, uh, is a juice fast. And so this, this means liquids only. 
and it's it's only recommended to do three to three to uh, five days. And this is uh, me and my family. We're going to try that this year, and then we're going to bounce to the to the uh, partial fast. So we're going to go back and forth, but we're going to um, we're going to do the juice fast. And so uh, my wife made me this green juice. I don't know what was in it, <laughs> but <laughs> praise God, I'm feeling good. But uh, so we're going to do that. So the juice fast is it's liquids only. And, you know, and within all these fasts, please talk to your doctor. Um, if you have any medical conditions or medicine and stuff like that, we understand. But please talk to your doctor and be prayerful. But the juice fast is recommended three to five days. Um, and then the second one is the Daniel fast. Um, and you can, uh, this means no meat, no sugar, no bread, uh, just fruits and vegetables. And you can, there's so many resources online that talks about the Daniel fast in different ways and recipes and all those things. And so you are the Daniel fast. And then we have uh, the partial fast. And that'll go from seven to four um, and just water only during that time, seven to four daily. Uh, if that's the partial fast. Yeah. And then we have the full fast and that is no eating for uh, three days. And so please, again, talk to your doctor, all right, when you do the full fast. Um, um, and that's no joke. All right, your body started talking to you, amen? And so, um, but those are the fasts that we're going to partake in, just different options. Uh, we have some scriptures and things online uh, dealing with fasting. And so, um, you know, but somebody might be saying, but pastor, why do we need to fast? That's a good question. But let me tell you, what, let me tell you what's going on. John 10 and 10 says this. It says that the thief, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. So let me stop right there, but who's the thief? That's the enemy. That's what he's coming to do. And, he, and then, But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. See, Tab family, this is, it, this is so powerful because God said that he wants us to have life and have it more abundantly. See, this is what the scripture says, and, 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 and here's what happens. When you fast and pray, what you do, you put the foot on top of the enemy's head, and you just push it right in. Can I tell you that? See, y'all know I love food, but can I tell you, let me compare this to food. This is the fasting and praying is the secret sauce. <laughs> it's the secret sauce to your victory in your life. Y'all know what secret sauce is, right? When I, was, when I was thinking about when we have sushi and, and you know, my family loves sushi and I'm, I'm a pretend sushi lover. But uh, <laughs> they bring the sushi out and I'm excited. But then when they bring that spicy mayo, whoo, that turns it to a different direction. See, fasting and praying is the secret sauce to breakthroughs in your life. I can tell you, it changes the atmosphere. You see, fasting is, is, is setting aside what we want and seeking what God wants. Fasting is denying our physical and builds up our spiritual. Fasting and prayer is what draws our hearts closer to our awesome God. Amen? Amen. And so I want you to ask yourself, self, do you want to have the best year ever? You ask yourself. Ask yourself. Self, talk to yourself. I know y'all talk to yourself. Self. I did this. I said to myself, do I want out of the best year? This is what happens. And, and, and your answer should have been yes. But let me show you how it's going to happen. If you commit to seeking God like you've never sought him before. Let me say that again. You will have the best year ever if you commit to seeking God like you've never sought him before. If you commit to, to having the best life you've ever had, best year you've ever had spiritually, if you commit to reading your word, if you commit to praying, if you commit to worship, and if you commit to fasting, if you commit to what we call the Thrive 45, y'all thought I forgot, we even forgot about Thrive 45, can I tell you, you will have the best year you've ever had if you put God first. He will meet all of your needs. Some of you might be saying, maybe online, saying, well, how do you know that, Pastor? Let me tell you, Matthew 6, 33, this is what it says. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And if you go up in the scripture, they're talking about their clothing and what we're going to do and all that type of stuff. So Jesus makes this comment. He said, listen, seek first me, and then everything else that you need 
your wants and all that type of stuff, all the, it'll be added unto you. Why is God saying that right here? Because church, if we put him first, he will provide everything that we need. If you put him first in your home, if you put him first in your schedule, if you put him first in your finances, if you put him first in your marriage, if you put him first on your job, everything else will fall right into place. Come on, somebody. Seek God first, and I want you to watch how he responds. You know, every year, uh, probably around October, ish, you know, I start praying, say, Lord, you know, what's what the word for the year? And, and um, you know, just something, you know, direction for this year for the church. And, and so the Lord put this in my spirit. If my sons and daughters will seek me first and get prepared, get prepared for me to bless them. You see, God wants us to prepare this year for breakthrough. He wants us to, God, God wants us to prepare for houses that we didn't build. God wants us to prepare for healing to happen. God, he wants us to prepare for our marriage to be made whole. He wants us to prepare that, that someone, that our loved one that we've been praying for all these years, he wants to prepare for them to come to the Lord. God wants us to be prepared in our finances to go to the next level. God wants us to be prepared for that promotion that's going to come this year. God wants us to be prepared for the things that he is going to do in our life. But let me, let me slow down because I want to make sure you, we're on the same page. And because some of us are saying, yeah, amen, that's good. And, but, but what does prepare mean? Prepare means make ready. Come on, preach with me, Terry. It means, it means, it means get ready. It means put together. It means draw up. It means produce. It means arrange. It means develop. It means uh, assemble. It means construct. It means compose. It means edit. It means devise. Let me go back to that edit because some people you got to edit out of your life this year in 2022 because they're stopping you from the blessing that God has for you. Amen? That wasn't even in my notes. That's just extra. All right? It means prepare means to work out. It means to think up. It means to formulate. It means to work up. You see, can I tell you, church, that preparation, it takes action. It takes you doing something, not just sitting and, 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 and doing nothing. See, we had a new year because the clock moved. But there's no, people say new year, new me. There's no new year, new me if you don't move. You see, preparation takes action. Could it be in the year 2021 that, that you were sitting around waiting for God and, and all the time God was waiting for you to get prepared for the blessing he has in store for you? How are you going to have a, a, uh, a best-selling book if you haven't started writing yet? How, how are you... Uh, uh, going to, to get, receive that, that wife or that husband if you're still messing around with frickin' frack? How are you going to go to the next level financially if you're not willing to pay any tithes? Come on, somebody. Can I, can I preach today? I've already started preaching. Y'all thought I was in this, this. I've already started preaching. How do you expect God to bless your health if you're not willing to change your diet? What is it that God has told you to do? Well, pastor, I don't understand. No, I, I understand. Can I tell you, I understand. See, oftentimes God calls us to do things that are scary and intimidating. Let me give you an example. I want you to watch this. I'm going to put something on the screen that's been scary and intimidating. And I've only shared with a few people, but you, you see the screen and, and those online, you see online. But I'm standing in front of a building that I, the, the, the spirit of the Lord dropped in my spirit over three years ago. That this is going to be our church. Now, can I tell you, this is scary and intimidating. 
And the Spirit of the Lord said, listen, you've been, 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 you've been bouncing around this. You told a few people, but I want you to put this out there. Amen. Come on, and listen, y'all, I, I, listen, your pastor's different in 2022. He said, I want you to put this out there because this is scary and intimidating. And then you go tell everybody that this is going to be your, every time I drive by, I tell our kids, hey, they're the tabernacle. I, I, they, they'll tell you. Every time I drive by, I say, that's the tabernacle. Right there. For years, I've been saying that. For years, I've been driving by this building saying, this is a building going to be the place where people's lives get restored. This is the place where people are going to come and that don't have no food and they'll be able to get food and shelter. This is the place that's going to be able to uh, uh, restore marriages. Come on, somebody. This is the place that, that, that people are going to become here to, to break every addiction that's on their life. This is the place that's going to be able to be able to give to the poor. Come on, this is the place where disciples for Jesus Christ will be, uh, will be transformed and made. That is the place that's going to transform not only the Tri-Valley, but transform the world. That's the place. Can I tell you, yes, it's intimidating, and yes, it's scary, but can I tell you this, that the Bible says that all things, come on, somebody, are possible with those who believe. You see, I want you to write this down. Fear stops faith. Fear stops faith. Fear causes you to sit. Fear causes you to remain comfortable. That's a word we understand in our culture, comfortable. We all want to be comfortable. We want to dress comfortable. We want things to be comfortable. We want things to be easy. We want drive through. We don't want to wait for anything. Comfortable shoes, comfortable. And nothing wrong with comfort, but there's something wrong when it, becomes, when it comes to the word of God. Because when I read my Bible that none of the disciples and the men and women that were in the Bible, they were comfortable. They were on a mission. And see, comfortability we will stop your mission. You see, fear will cause to you to make excuses. How many of y'all like people to make excuses? They will do something like, ah, well, you know, I had to do, ah, uh, you know, I couldn't. And then you like, like, that's just an excuse. You see, I was raised, let's, let's get it done. Can't's not in our vocabulary. Let's just get it done. I don't want to hear no excuses. You see, that's what fear calls you to do. Fear calls you to settle. It calls you to settle because, oh, well, it didn't happen today, so mm, I'm just going to settle. And so many of us are settling because of, of fear. Let me tell you, Mark 9, 23 and 24 says this. It says, Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. I want you to catch what number 24 says. It says, immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord. So here's what was happening. His kid was sick and they needed Jesus to heal him. And, and so he said, if all things are possible, you believe. Look what 24 says. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, help my unbelief. You see, I believe this is where so many of us are at because we're afraid to believe God for the impossible. We're afraid to believe God's going to, 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 to heal uh, my loved one. We're afraid to believe God's going to, to, uh, to bless my marriage. We're afraid to believe God's going to, 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 to give me that house we've been praying for and saving. We're afraid to believe God that, that my children are going to seek God. We're afraid to believe God for the impossible. But church, God said that if, if, if you would just believe, all things are possible. You see, just because you don't get something or get a prayer heard doesn't mean that you shouldn't believe. Because I want to start out, because it's not just, no, you know, you believe in being, right? No, listen, God's saying, I want you to believe even if it don't come to pass. I still want you to believe. You see, that's faith. It's, that's trusting God, because I'm going to believe even if it didn't happen the way I thought it was going to happen. I'm still going to believe and trust you. Amen. We have to believe God for the supernatural. We have to believe God that he will part red seas in our life. 
We have to believe God for whatever is broken that God can heal and fix and make it whole again. Church, I know it's intimidating. It was intimidating me for showing you that picture. But God said, listen, I want you to operate in faith, not fear. Amen. I know it's scary, but pastor, choose faith over fear. I want to share a story with you in Genesis 6, 9 through 14. Genesis chapter 6, 9 through 14. And it says, this, the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Verse 14, make yourself an ark of gopher wood, make rooms in the ark, and cover it inside and out with pitch. Hmm. Now, most of us have heard this story, and we might have heard it when we were little kids, of uh, the Noah and the ark. And Noah built an ark, and, 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 and the rains came, and all this type of stuff. We, we've heard this, this story, but I, I want to uh, jump into this text, because this is what the Lord gave me for this Sunday morning, because I feel that majority of us miss what really took place during this time. Can I point out that Noah was over 500 years old? I say that because uh, that's crazy. <laughs> 500 years old. I mean, if you've been around church a little time, sometimes what happens when we get in church, we get older, we think we don't have to do nothing. I've done that already. And you say, hey, well, I know, I know, I know, I've already done that. We have that type of attitude because we were older, and so because we're older, we feel like, feel like we can sit on the sidelines with God. But can I tell you, it don't matter how old you are. Until you go be with the Lord, there's still work for you and I to do. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And so, 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 so Noah's 500 years old, and there's, there's wickedness going on everywhere. There's, there's chaos going on everywhere. There's strife, and, and God is not pleased. You know what, church? It sounds a little bit like now, doesn't it? There's no regard for the things of God. Everyone is doing their own thing. Matter of fact, everybody is more concerned about this life than the life to come. Everyone's heart is, is far from God, but the Bible says that God was, was sorry that he ever created man. That's a huge statement. But then God says this. Let's go look at Genesis 6, 8. It says that, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Can I ask you a question? You don't have to answer, but do you think the Lord would say this about you? Do you think the Lord would say he's found grace in your eyes? You see, with all the stuff going on in our culture and around the world, all the chaos and, and all the just, just, just fights and just everything, everyone's just divided, would he say that he's found grace in his eyes for you. You see, Noah's 500 years old, and God says, okay, listen, this is what I want you to do. Noah, I want you to build an ark. And he gives them instruction, the type of wood, and how to build, uh, you know, I want a roof over it with windows, and he gives them all these things. Let me share my first point with you today. When you walk with God, he will ask you to do things that will scare you. When you walk with God, he will ask you to do things that will scare you. Noah has detailed instructions on how to build an ark. Can I ask you a question? What is an ark anyway? Because that's probably the question Noah asked. What, what's, what's an ark? Let me put it like this. What would you say if you're my neighbor and I go in the front yard, and I start hammering away. First of y'all, y'all that really know me, y'all would laugh because you know I don't, I don't even know where the hammer's at in my house. But just pretend with me for a little bit, okay? And so I, I'm in my front yard. I'm building away, and you say, what are you doing? I say, I'm building a spaceship. 
and I'm building a spaceship, and, and uh, there's a meteorite going to hit the Earth, and so I'm building a spaceship, and we're going to get out of here, and I'm going to fly to Mars, and that's where we're going to be. God go meet me there. What would you say? Y'all say, I'm, I'm crazy. You would say, you done lost your mind, right? And, 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 but don't you think this is the response that Noah got? Yeah. Noah got the same response. And let me, let me give you my point number two real quick. Obedience to God will oftentimes make you look crazy. Obedience to God will oftentimes make you look crazy. How about Moses? Moses. Go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. That's what God told them. That's crazy. What about uh, Peter uh, when, when Jesus showed up on the boat and he said, listen, and Peter's a fisherman. He's been fishing all night long. He knows what he's doing. Jesus said, you know, listen, I want you to go out and then put your net on the other side. Crazy. Or how about uh, uh, the blind uh, uh, man? He said, come here. <laughs> Look, you crazy. You ain't spitting a mile. Or what about the 10 men with leprosy said, listen, I want you guys to just start running to the priest. Go run to the city and you'll be made whole by the time you get there. Well, guess what? That sounds crazy. Noah building an ark is absolutely crazy. He said, you know what, it's going to rain. And, and I want you to understand that it had never rained before. They didn't know what rain was. In those times, that, that Jesus, with the mist and, and the dew, that's how he watered the earth. So they didn't know what rain even meant at that time. And so Noah is out there. He's, he's building an ark, and everybody thinks he's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> Can't you see people walking by him and, and saying, wow, look at that crazy man. But let's add to it because the Bible says that he had a family, so he had sons and he had a wife. And, and so they're talking about the kids. And then somebody probably saying, you know what, man, that poor wife, she has a crazy husband. You felt sorry for the wife, but can I tell you this, that they were made fun of, they were talked about, they were laughed at. But guess how long this went on, church? This went on, some say over 55, 75 years, they don't know exact time, but this went on for a long time time. Can you imagine doing something that's never been done before and being made fun of and people think you're crazy for over 55 years? That's a long time. To be ostracized, to be put away, no one to talk to you, be talked about, be made fun of. That, that's a 55 years. They were treated this way. But see, Noah said, it don't matter how long it takes that, but my faith is stronger than my fear. If God said he'll do it, then guess what? He will do it. Let me give my third point in closing. God's promises have no expiration date. God's promises have no expiration date. Stop thinking it's too late. Stop thinking you're too old. Stop thinking uh, and letting what others say about situation. Stop, stop letting them say anything because God has not forgot about you. God's promises don't expire. You see, Tab family, if we seek God and get prepared, God's going to do the impossible in your life. I'm going to say that again. If you seek God and get prepared, he's going to do the impossible in your life. You see, Noah, he believed God. He believed God. This is why he found grace in God's sight. To be able to do what he did, this man had to have incredible faith. Think about it. As I woke up this morning, usually I go over a message and the Lord dropped this in my spirit. Just miracle after miracle happened because the Bible says that he had to put all the animals on the ark. Seven, groups of seven and Seven kinds, and 
Y'all ever seen animals get along like that? All the animals just marched on the ark. They weren't trying to eat each other. They weren't fighting. Come on, y'all. Y'all know I'm not an animal person, but I'm, I mean, I've seen some animals, and then you get one animal around, so one animal eat the other animal, but they all went on the ark. It didn't say they was fighting. It didn't say Noah had to grab one and his son Shep had to. No, they went on the ark. Our God is a miracle worker. But we got to be prepared for the miracle. Fifty-five years or more. And all of a sudden the sky opened up. And it began to rain. Can you imagine the thought of Noah while he's in the ark that God told him to build? God told him to prepare for? Can you imagine, church, if he didn't prepare? What would have happened? Can you imagine? Because see, we, 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 we put these, you know, the, the Noah ark I've seen in preschools and it's all fun and glory, but that's not what happened. When it began to rain, people died. They were screaming. They were drowning. And Noah was on the ark with his family and with the animals that God told him to, to have on there. By this man's preparation, he, he saved his whole family. Could it be you? By your preparation, you change your family's generation and generations to come. This is what Noah did. He knew that at the 20th year, at the 30th year, at the 40th year, that God's blessings and God's word has no expiration date. And can I tell you, church, that he says he's coming back again for his church. And he said, guess what? Our job is to be what? Be ready. Be prepared. This is what he says in his word online. This is what he says in his word. And so, church, we have to wake up and be prepared because God is coming back. The question is, will you stay faithful? Will you keep trusting him? Will you keep seeking him because he's coming back. He's coming back for prepared people. Will that be you? Let's stand to our feet. What miracle will you be a part of because you made the choice to seek God like you've never sought him before? What miracle would that be? Before I sit down, I, I want us to, as today starts our 21-day fast, as we start this fast, seeking God in prayer and fasting, What will God call you to prepare for? I asked him to pass out some papers for you guys. And I want you to write your prayer down. And I don't, you don't have to put your name, but I just want to join you in prayer. For whatever you're seeking God for, we want to pray for you and the prayer team, we meet on Monday mornings. We pray, we pray every morning for this church. 
Daphne and, and Sister Florence, we pray for you guys. Every morning we're praying. Y'all can join us if y'all want. Now, it's open. Six o'clock. Like I said earlier, if you want to have the best year you've ever had, have the best year you've ever had seeking God and watch what happens. But I want you to write that down and we have the offering bags. If you could just drop it in there, your prayer request. Someone can grab the offering bags for me, please. And do we have the paper? And like I said, you don't have to put your name. I don't need to know who it is. We just want to join you in prayer. But I pray, Lord, that the Lord touched your heart this morning with understanding that we got to have faith. we got to move in faith over fear. Because the enemy is always going to tell you that it's not going to happen. You're not worthy. Oh, God forgot about you. You're not good enough. And he'll whisper all these things in your head. But I want to remind you that you are the king's daughter. You are the king's son. And God's blessings have no expiration date. And what he's saying to you this year is get ready. Be prepared for the miracles that I'm going to do in your life. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word this morning. God, we thank you for the faithfulness of Noah. Because that's why we're standing here today. Lord, I pray, God, that your word did not fall on deaf ears, God, but I pray that it penetrated our hearts. Father, we're going to operate from here on out from faith rather than fear. Lord, do a new work in us. Allow us to move and prepare and to expect you to move in mighty ways in our lives. You said, put me in remembrance of my word. And word you said, your word says all things are possible if we would just believe. And so God, we stand on your promises. Thank you, Jesus. God, we love you. And Father, I pray as we leave this place that we never leave your presence. In your mighty and incredible name, God. Amen and amen. God bless you, church.